All right, hello everyone. Millsup Garage here. Been hard at work finding this Modern Warfare 2 shirt. No, actually, been hard at work with these styres, and uh, I've done some research, and I've learned nothing. Uh, this is a tough, tough gun to research. There's no dates on these freaking things, and uh, I'm not even really sure what models I have here. You guys might need to help. It's ridiculous. There's they a lot of websites talk about them as if you're already you know in the uh, in the know, and that's nice when you're already in the know. But when you really just buy these things cold and don't know anything, it's uh, it's tough. But let me explain to you uh, what I've done so far. This was my mission was to show them to you when I first bought them and then tell you how I'm coming along. So uh, let's start with the carbine. That's the, as far as I'm going to describe it as a carbine. A carbine. I know it says M95 on it, and it says Steyr. So as far as I know, I know it was made in the Steyr factory. I know it's an M95, um, and it has this S on it over here. Uh, you able to visualize that? It has this S on it over here, which uh, denotes that it was uh, either changed to be the more modern um, 8x56 round instead of the 8x50, or it's just letting you know that it was manufactured for the 8x56 and not the 8x50. I don't know which. I don't know if this was originally chambered for the older one. I don't know what the age of it is. I have no idea. I know it has a lot of parts that have this K on it. Uh, there's K's all over the place. Um, as far as markings, there's a three and a circle on the stock. A couple of other small cartouches that are hard to read. Oh, there's one back here that says 17... In a square, does that help? I don't know, I'm totally lost with this thing. I know that it has one serial number uh, crossed out and then a serial number on it that's on that's on the gun. That's on the barrel, the receiver, and electro-penciled into the bolt. But, let me talk about what exactly happened with this one. Now this one, I broke it down. Uh, I noticed that it had, I believe this to be a Swedish uh, sling. And I just left it for now. Didn't even research slings yet. Only research bayonets. See that they're not incredibly cheap. But I want to try to get bayonet scabbard frog all in one shot. And it looks like it's a little pricey. But they're out there. There were a couple of buy it nows on eBay. I kind of waited. I'm just going to uh, do my research and see if, uh, you know, I could maybe find one a little bit cheaper than what I was looking at. But they were in nice shape. Now, uh... This one has, uh, just from what I'm reading, I, a lot of the names, I didn't write anything down, but there was a Stutz something that was supposed to be the, the, the shortened rifle, the small one like this, and I'm, I'm thinking that's what this is. I don't think this was a, a uh, rifle that was a cut-down version of a larger one. I think this was made short, I believe. Now, this one, um, it has a sight, and what's interesting about these is that I read a lot of people talking about them. You see the site right here. It has graduations on it. Let me get a nice shot of that. See that the lowest number I saw on there was a six. And then if you look at it from the position where you're firing, you could see right on there that there's a five. Now, there's different um, things that these numbers were for. Apparently, when they were originally made, there was a certain unit of measurement that the Austrians used that was not, um, you know, meters or yards. It was their own thing. And I, and I read it again. I didn't write it down. I forgot exactly what it's called. But if you know what I'm talking about, then you know what it is. And uh, supposedly, when the Germans came in, these things were shelved. And then when they, uh, when they took them back out and put them into service, they put the numbers back on. I don't know. These sites might have gone through some changes. But I knew a lot of people were talking about that the lowest graduation on it was a three. And all I saw was a 6 or a 5 on the actual site. And then I'm really seeing, like, there are so many apertures to this site. It doesn't appear that way. But um, what I saw after poking around, let me get it in here so I could get closer to you. We're going to look at what I see on the site. What I noticed is that if you flip it up, right, what you're looking at is the 6. You can see it there on the bottom, the 6. If you lift this to... Uh, use that aperture, let's say. Lo and behold, underneath is the three they were talking about. I didn't even see it there. But this site has so many apertures. It has the normal aperture here that you would use. 
when it's flipped down that has a 5 on it. And then if you flip it up, it has this lowest aperture. There is a sight aperture in there. Uh, it's about as close as I could get you. There's an aperture here for a 3. Then there's an aperture on here that is the one that you would be able to adjust. And then there's an aperture way up on the top that has a, uh, what's on there? A 24 is way up on there. It's hard to read, but there's a 24 up on the top. So there's like four apertures in this little teeny flip-up sight. And uh, I guess the one that you'd use at the range would be this lowest one. You'd have to flip this up all the time and use that bottom one, I suppose, because uh, you would be shooting at pretty moderate distances compared to what they have these things listed at, you know. Um, so that's what I found out about the sight, and that this is uh, this might be like an original sight for these smaller guns. You know what I'm saying? I saw the pictures of them, and I saw a bunch of them. Now, uh, this thing took to a nice cleanup. Uh, the wood cleaned up nice with some mineral spirits and the uh, the action. Everything was kind of dirty. There was some rust on the barrel that needed some attention. Ooh, and there's a 50 on here. Right by the sight, there's a 50. <laughs> There's a 50. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm not seeing anything that's breaking down how to read these things. See, I don't have anything on my receiver to denote a date. There's nothing there. There's an S. There's like the line that they put when they put a replacement barrel, I guess, to line it up with the receiver. Steyr and M95. That's it. Underneath here, there was nothing. A couple of little numbers here and there. I don't know. How could that possibly have been? It was like a 2. You know, what does a 2 mean? I, I don't know. Uh, but underneath, there was a whole bunch of little stampings underneath the, uh, the receiver, you know. But um, I would have wrote everything down, but they're very easy to break down. I just figured I'll break it, break it down again to record everything. But uh, I had some issues. Let me explain to you what those were. Number one, on this one, the bolt, um, I noticed... These, the bolts on these things are weird. You pull the trigger forward to get the bolt out. Now on this one, it doesn't snap closed. If it snaps closed, you'll have some issues. You have to open it back up again. It has to be put back in, even taking it apart and putting it together. It's, it's, it's a challenge. It's, there's a couple of videos on it. You look out there, they'll be able to guide you. Um, the biggest problem is this, this thing is half out, and this bolt, this bolt head snaps home. See, I'll show you how it does it. All you got to do is tap it. If you tap it, see how it snaps It snaps closed like that? If it snaps closed like that when it's halfway out, and you still have this, you have this, these, like, fins right here in the grooves, but the bolt kind of snaps halfway and it's stuck in here. <sighs> Hope you got nothing to do for the next hour. It's a pain in the ass. It really is. Um, you, when you when you pull these out, see, and you can straighten this again, you pull it out and it kind of turns it, it, and it comes back into place. Now, when you pull these out, you just kind of really want to mean it. You just all in one shot, boom, because, and it might snap closed, but at least you won't get it stuck halfway. You don't want that to happen. Now, the issue I was having with this one is that when I went to put it back in, you line up these grooves, it, it, it wouldn't go back in. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? What am I not pulling the trigger? Am I pulling the trigger? What do I do here? Then I realized that on this, and I don't know if any, I don't see any way to really repair this. It's just something I'm just going to have to deal with. You see how, I hope I can get this for you. I don't know if I'm going to be able to actually show you, but the, the uh, locking lug doesn't perfectly line up with the extractor. See how you can see it's like on this side, it's set in a little bit over here, and on the other side sticks out a little bit so that lip right there is what was preventing it from going back in perfectly and I don't see any way of aligning it better just by looking at it and messing with it I didn't see anything so then uh, what I realized in order to get this bolt back in is that uh, I would need to get it started and then press down on the locking lugs on this side to straighten it out and then it would go home See, so it was, a, it was a little bit of a pain in the neck, this one getting it in and out, but I learned it. And uh, it doesn't really seem like it's going to be an issue. I really thought I was never going to get the bolt back in. Uh, another issue that I had was that the follower in the magazine, um, another weird thing, it has like these, these two little forks 
It looks sort of like a Mosin one, but it's a little bit more fragile, a little bit more complicated. And it has these two forks that fit underneath when it folds together. They fit underneath another part of it to fold flat when it's fully loaded. And there's also a block in between. So if those two little arms are either getting caught on the block or not perfectly lining up in that other piece that it needs to fold together, it doesn't fold together right. Both of these rifles had this problem where I could not press a, a, a full clip into the mat into the magazine it wouldn't go it would go in like this far and then it felt like something was binding and I didn't want to push and I didn't want to shove thank God I didn't because I would have bent those little teeny arms up on both of them I had to disassemble the whole thing and straighten those little arms out and get them in there perfect might be one reason why uh, you know these things hadn't been fired in a long time or why somebody might have want to get rid of them is because they didn't understand how to uh, straighten that out but, uh, but I straightened it out, so now, like, and I, and I wasn't satisfied with just making it right, I had to make it perfect, so it just, uh, now they go right in, perfect, and that's it, it just goes in until it clicks, and there's a little button over here that uh, you pop them back out again, and um, that's it, I, the, the chambers were filthy, where the locking lug seat were filthy, now this bolt is smooth as silk, it's beautiful, you know, now all I gotta do is fire it, and um, for as far as the long rifle, um, same thing. It's basically, um, basically the same thing. I've got no real numbers on this thing. I've just got a whole bunch of cross outs on the stock of serial numbers. Five of them crossed out, as a matter of fact. One, two, four of them crossed out, and there's just one number on it. But the same thing up on top here, nothing going on. This is the one that has the two. There's a two over here. I don't know if that two means anything. But none of these other stamps that I'm seeing other people talk about, nothing. But the same thing with the electro penciling on the bolt and the numbers matching here and everything. And uh, the sight is similar, except I don't know why I have half the sight scrubbed. You see that? I don't know if it's supposed to be that way. This whole side here, nothing. You know, and then I don't see one that looks like this with the numbers like that. But it, it's kind of like the same deal going on. There's the three way down on the bottom. And uh, there is a number back here, you know, the five is back there. It's very similar, but I, I don't know why one side of it looks like it was scrubbed or something. It's just, did the, I heard maybe the Nazis had them scrubbed and put meters back on it or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't know, help me someone. Uh, this one looks like it has a Swiss sling on it, which I don't really mind so much either because I like these. The way you pull them close, slide the keeper up for them to be tight. Slide the keeper back, tug on this to make them long again for carry. You know, I, I like these slings, so I'm not really that. Uh, I'm not really complaining about it. I really want to see what the uh, slings that are supposed to be on it look like before I change anything. And uh, but same issue, same issue. Not the same issue with the bolt actually, but this bolt, if it comes out, it automatically snaps closed. It doesn't stay open. So you have to use that trick with the dime. You can look online and see this one won't stay open. So you have to use that thing with the dime to get it to get it to go back in. But it goes back in as soon as it lines up. It goes back in smooth. Uh, so there's no issues with that one lining up. This extractor lines up perfectly with the locking lugs. That's how I knew. It's always nice to have two guns. You have something to compare it to. I saw what was wrong. But it had the same issue with the magazine here. This guy must have cleaned it and not realized that you can't get a rag caught on it or beat those things up. He must have cleaned it too vigorously and bent them. But I got them all back into place. They weren't bent up that bad. They were just a little out of place. And uh, again, this one now working the same way. Working just as perfect. It goes in. It clicks. Uh... It pops out, not a problem, you know. So, uh, and, and they and they chamber and cycle. I did it someplace safe. I won't do it here, but they do uh, cycle every round right to the end of the clip, and the clip pops out. Um, just wanted to make sure it cycled, but I really wasn't sure about head spacing or the firing pin was protruding, and I just want, didn't want to put a round through my garage, so I went and did it someplace safe. Um, but does cycle the rounds. Now uh, they just need to be shot. And... Uh, that's it. That's where I'm at right now. Hopefully the next video will be a range video with these things. And all I have right now is this surplus uh, German, this Nazi marked ammo. Uh, and I hear that this stuff kicks like a bastard. I can't wait. I love powerful kicking guns. That's what I live for. Uh, I can't wait to like, really feel these things. So hopefully the next video will be a range video and I will see you then.